After weeks of leaked info and pictures turning up online, DJI have finally released the Mavic A2. Now this has sort of been the worst kept secret in the drone industry and many of us who follow these things have known about this one for some time. However, now that it is officially out, we can take a look at it in a bit more detail. Now today I want to talk to you guys a little bit about the spec and I'm going to share with you my observations on that, but I also want to talk to you about what I think you need to take into account before ordering this drone and specifically the fact that EU users are not getting a model that is equipped with the DJI AirSense safety system. Now to talk about the new Mavic A2. This is an all new design and gone is the old sleek look of the original Mavic A and you now have this larger slightly grey looking brick type design that we've had from the Mavic 2. It is a little bit larger and a little bit heavier than the original Mavic A being about 140 grams heavier in total. However with that weight comes some benefits as well and DJI have managed to increase its flight time to a maximum of 34 minutes and that is a substantial gain over the original Mavic A. Moving over to the camera, it has been completely reworked and it now has the same sensor that Autel are using on the Evo 2 8K edition. And whilst the Mavic A isn't doing strict 8K video, they have been able to upgrade the output that it can produce. And that is as follows. It can record up to 4K 60 frames a second, up to 120 megabits a second. It can also record 4K 30 HD. HDR, as well as supporting 8K hyperlapse video and 48 megapixel stills. So whilst it isn't doing the same 8K quad bayer video that Autel are doing, it is sort of matching it with this 8K hyperlapse. However, it is worth taking into account that it is using that quad bayer filter and the basics of that, as I explained in my video at the time on the Autel Evo 2, is that it is strictly like a 12 megapixel sensor, but it has this extra pixels below the filter to be able to try and get more detail, but it isn't quite the same as having a full 48 megapixel sensor. Now DJI do say that it's capable of 12 megapixel stills as standard and it supports both JPEG and RAW output on stills as well and on video you have two colour profiles available. Now with regards to that camera output it is great to see that 4k 60 frames a second however it is worth taking into account that that is at 120 megabits a second and if you then compare that to say traditional 4k 30 you're actually only getting getting 60 megabits a second in that setup like the old Phantom 3 Pro. However, because of the codex this is using, I would expect it to look a lot better than that overall. What isn't known yet is what the HDR video content will look like and what bit rates we're getting in them, but hopefully we're going to be able to see that HDR30 up to a maximum of 120 megabits a second as well. Alongside an all-new camera system, it has an upgraded wireless system and it now integrates OcuSync 2.0 on both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. And that means it has a maximum range of up to 10 kilometers in 1080p video. And that is pretty much the same as DJI specify for the Mavic 2 Pro. Now, because it is using OcuSync and it is using the dual band OcuSync, that means it will also work with the DJI Smart Controller. When whilst it doesn't work out the box today, DJI have said that it will be supported after a firmware update in the future. Now one downside to this though is that DJI have said is that it will not work with the FPV goggles. So that is the goggles white, the goggles RE or the new FPV goggles. So if you did want to use the new Mavic A2 with FPV, you would have to use it after the future update on HDMI versus the smart controller, but there will will not be a direct connection to this drone via the goggles wirelessly or USB. Looking around the aircraft, it carries over much of the same features that the original Mavic Air did with both dual front and rear object avoidance sensors and the downward facing sensors as well. However, there is no side object sensing on this and that is something to take into account compared to say the Mavic 2 Pro. And if you are using features like POI, you will need to make sure that the area around the side of the drone is completely clear. Something else on safety compared to say the Mavic 2 Pro is that it only has single sensors. It does not have dual IMU or dual compass, so it only has one of those sensors and doesn't include that sensor redundancy that we've come to expect on some of the newer models. 
Alongside the redesigned craft, the remote controller has been completely overhauled as well, and you can see that it is a bit larger than the original one that we had on the Mavic series. They've basically filled in the bottom and added a new integrated clamp into the top to hold the smart device. Because of the remote controller's increased size, it also means that they've been able to increase the size of the battery as well to give much longer operating times on the remote as well as having longer flight times on the aircraft. Now the standard remote does not include a screen which means that you will need to use your smart device and DJI have said it's going to use the Fly app just like the Mavic Mini did. Now they have upgraded the app and it is working with the current version that is available and for iOS users you won't have any problems at all. However if you are an Android user you will need to take into account that this app only currently supports 64-bit versions of OS and you will need to make sure that your phone is compatible. Now, as I mentioned at the start of this video, there is something you need to be aware of with regards to the DJI AirSense system. Last year, they announced that 2020 models of aircraft would include AirSense as standard. And whilst the Mavic Air 2 does have it built in, that isn't for every region. Now, if you don't know what AirSense is, it is the system that allows the DJI aircraft to pick up ADS-B transponders from manned aviation that are equipped with them. And basically, if you are flying and an airliner flies above your head it will come up on your screen and show the position of that aircraft if you have the ADS-B fitted on the aircraft or DJI AirSense and whilst they have integrated it into the North America US model European models are not getting this as standard and DJI have said this is due to a lack of parts availability as a result of the human malware situation so as of today only models sold in the USA will have the DJI AirSense system built in, models sold in Europe will not. Now this is a bit of a downside for European users because they are not getting the benefit of this new safety system that DJI are including for free for US customers. Further to that, it does appear that this is simply because of a supply chain issue and later models in Europe will get this built in as standard. And if that is the case, it is going to penalise early adopters of the Mavic Air to give them a less featured aircraft compared to people who buy it later. Now, looking at the two models, it is only AirSense that is the difference between these, but it is a shame that it has come down to the fact of one region is going to get this safety feature and another region is not. Here and now, there isn't a lot people can do about it, but it is worth taking into account before you purchase this model. So do I think you should buy the Mavic Air 2? Well, really, if you look at the specifications on this and the price, it is a bit of a bargain in the sense of it is probably the most feature-rich aircraft for $799 that there is right now. For that money, you get 4K 60 frames a second, 120 megabits a second. You can get 4K HDR, 48 megapixels still, and 8K hyperlapse. You're getting OcuSync 2.0 for fantastic range as well as 34 minutes flight time and I can't think of another drone that will give you that much features for $799. Now really it isn't a replacement for the Mavic 2 Pro with this one inch sensor however I would be considering the new Mavic Air over say the Mavic 2 Zoom that's in my opinion going to be a far better option. Now comparing it to other models out there such as the Evo 2 8K while Whilst it is not as good a specification as that aircraft, it is substantially cheaper as well. And in my opinion, you're going to find many users opt for the Mavic A2 over the Evo 2 8K model simply because of the cost saving and the fact that for the 900 odd dollars, you're actually able to get it with a fly more kit extra batteries and ND filters and still have some money to put in the bank. And whilst there's no question the Evo 2 is a better aircraft overall, having much better object avoidance sensors on the side, it does not necessarily warrant that extra money unless you specifically need those features. So for me, here and now, I do think it is looking to be a very good aircraft. Whether I would upgrade it from a Mavic 2 is another question. However, if I was a Mavic Pro user, if I was a Mavic Air user right now, I would certainly be looking at the Mavic Air 2 as my next drone because price point wise, it really does fit the bill. However, you do need to take into account those things that I mentioned 
earlier. If FPV goggles is important to you, then perhaps the Mavic Air 2 might not be the one to go for. And if you're a European user and you wanted that DJI AirSense safety system, it could be worth holding out a few months to see if that gets added. Because whilst today's models won't have it, it won't be an upgrade either, simply because your aircraft won't have the hardware. Now it is a shame for DJI to have these two models shipped to different regions with different features, but it is only the AirSense that is the difference between them, and you'll have to decide if it's a big thing for you or not. As I said, the new Mavic A2 costs $799 and it's about £799 in the UK, and it is available to order now, and there's about a 14 to 17 day shipping window on it in Europe from what I was looking at. I believe it's a little less in the US. Now, as I said, if you did want to support the channel, please do check out the link in the description of this video. I'll put a link there to the Mavic 2 as well as the Mavic A2 as well if you did want to consider supporting us. I have ordered one myself to take a look at. I probably won't be keeping it because unfortunately I've had to spend to actually get the money back. However, I will be doing a review of it on the channel and I will be giving you my honest thoughts of it once hopefully we are out of lockdown and we're able to share them with you guys as well. That is it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Please do, as I said, hit that subscribe button and I will do another video again soon.